Man, I'm excited the presence of God in this place, aren't you? We're going to work on some things in November, okay? Some things we need to reestablish in our life. And the first one today is, guess what? It's something that we've just... Pastor Mark Hale, if you know Pastor Mark, he's preached on this for 10 years. Solid. And, and uh, we got to start really breathing this in. We need to be a people of gratitude. And we're not grateful for what we have. I mean, we're really not. There's so many great things that we can grab a hold of. Guess what? You students, you need to be grateful that you can go to college. You need to embrace that and do well with that opportunity. Uh, you know, we're the only nation in the world. We, we're not the only one, but we're one of the few nations in the world that will give you a free education for 12 years. And here's what I want you to understand. It's not free. We as the people invest our tax money into the education of the next generation because we want to create opportunity that they might be the best people that God made them to be. So we're going we're to work on today on what does it mean to be grateful? Well, I want to start here. I thank God that you're here and you're in worship. You could have done something else today. Any of y'all get aggravated today already this morning, you got ready to go to church, and the old devil starts saying, well, you don't really have to go today. What about this? What about that? Any of y'all get that on Sunday morning? It really hits guys. Well, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. Got to get that done. And that's just the old devil saying, you know what? I want to keep you out of the presence of God because I know the more you get in the presence of God, the more you'll start being what you're supposed to be. So here's what I want to help you us with. Today, we got to realize we got a God that we can be grateful to. For every person in this room that you've said, Lord Jesus, will you forgive me of my sins? Guess what he's done? Forgiving you. Brooks, you're forgiven. Now, that's amazing in my life, but guess what? It's amazing in yours, isn't it? If you don't mind, if you just tell the person next to you, even if you don't know them, just let them know you are forgiven. Oh, y'all, that was pretty weak, okay? That kind of sounded like silent hymn, prayer, and meditation. Go ahead and let them know you are forgiven. Come on, let them know you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Now, I want to warn you, and I have to warn you, some of you are new to our church, and I have to warn you when these things go on. Uh, David Duncan, you, you're an elder of our church because you've been here since we started this, this, this movement. And so you know what's fixing to happen, okay? David, you probably even sense this. God is opening up some windows for us to push through, and we got to push through. So, Jerry Heming, you've been, you've been through a few of these cycles here at Hillview. I call it when the wind blows a little stronger. Well, the wind is blowing for us to embrace God in, in bigger ways than we've ever embraced it. So i got to ask you to do some things. First of all, how many of you all are convinced that Jesus will make a difference in your friends' lives? Yeah, me too. Now, we got to start talking about Jesus. You know what I'm talking about, Bailey? We got to start talking it up. Because sometimes we listen, but we don't tell our side of the story. Would you agree with that? You have been in conversation hanging with the boys, you know, and they'll be talking about, well, God doesn't do this and God doesn't do that, and we don't have that and we don't have this. But, but we never speak up and say, hold on. This is what we do have. How many of y'all need to wake up to the do have of God? I know that's not a correct English phrase, but you understand it. The do have. How many of y'all glad to know that we do have enough in Jesus to get it done no matter what? How many of y'all celebrate that today? Amen? Well, I want to confess to you. Go to Luke chapter 17, verse 20. We're going to learn today on how to be grateful. What does it mean to be grateful? God wants to do great things in you. I, I, guess what? It is not weird today that there's a lot of young people in the auditorium. I want to thank you all for not smashing stuff up in Bowling Green. I want to thank you all for not acting stupid like the other half of your generation is. I want to thank you all for standing up to things that make things better and not destroying things in the name of my feelings are hurt. Okay? Now all the old people are in here going, that's right, Pastor, you tell them. And I apologize because you should have had a knot put on your head a long time ago. Now that's our fault. We told children that whatever they did was acceptable. Shame on us for not raising them in the ways of the Lord. And it's time for us to turn around and say, you know what? I want the best for everybody. How many of y'all want the best for everybody? 
Now, that's the attitude of Jesus. Tomorrow morning when you go to work, I want you to go to work, get a little, get a little groove in your step. I want the best for everybody that surrounds me. Isn't that the way Jesus lived? As a parent, you ought to, how many of y'all want the best for your children? You know, the two things that I prayed most of all for, God made my children not turn out like me. No, I'm serious. Yes, I did. I didn't want my kids to be like me. I want them to be like God and made them. Amen? That's different. Les, I, I've, I've seen your children. You must have had the same prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, you got these beautiful daughters. Do you want them to turn out like you, or do you want, to, to want them to turn out like God wants them to be? Absolutely. I, and I knew the answer to that. That's why I asked it. Dwayne Currybacker, you got this beautiful family. How did that happen? You married a bond, your ability. You see what I'm saying? You saw it early in life and said, man, guess what? I'm going to get a wife that can bless my world. This is what I'm talking about, folks. Live in such a way that the people around you are convinced it can be better. David, you do that at the funeral home. I had a funeral with you today. You always are in a mood that says, it ain't as bad as you think it is. That's your, that's your groove, isn't it? Well, I'm glad to have a guy that works with dead people that sees life. Huh? I'm glad he doesn't just see dead people. How depressing would that be? You see, the message of the gospel is not that we're going to die. It's that when we die, we're going to live on because of the grace of Jesus Christ. Is anybody thankful for that great message? So that means this. Every week that I got to preach a funeral, when I'm preaching a Hillview funeral, you can ask your funeral home directors. When it's a Hillview person, it's a lot different than when it's just somebody we don't know, especially if it's a non-believer. Those are the most horrible funerals. I mean, what do you say? Well, here lies, I'm done. And then you always get the question. Pastor Steve, you think he's in hell? I said, I don't know. Did he ever receive Jesus Christ? And they said, well, no, he never had anything to do with Jesus. Then I said, he still doesn't have anything to do with Jesus. And they go, well, that means he's in hell. You are correct. And Jesus didn't put him there. Gary Dale, Jesus didn't put him there. Because Jesus came so that we could live. How many of y'all believe that? So I want you to watch the attitude of Jesus. And watch this. Here's my, here's my approach. Quit worrying about elections. I agree with Jamie Ward. Thank God it's over. But I am worried about the people of God. I don't care who you voted for. I care who you live for. Do you live for Jesus? Live it. Listen, I don't know if we're going to make America great again. I think that's a bumper sticker. Kind of like hope and change. That one didn't work out either. But let me tell you what does change everything. Grace and mercy. Amen. And we ought to be the people of grace and mercy. Mom, that's why I keep telling you what. It's going to be all right because there's something bigger than the situation in your life. Wow. Say wow to your neighbor. Wow. Wow. Now, i got to confess to you. For 52 years of my life, I had excellent health. I mean, I really did. I'm one of these guys that have energy that just pours out everywhere. I had that kind of energy. I was laughing. And I was listening to uh, Giuliani talk about Trump. And he and Trump would be up at 2 o'clock in the morning working on strategy while all the 20-something staff people are asleep. Sometimes the staff here does that to me. They'll go, we are human. We must eat and sleep. You go about your own whatever it is. But I had a lot of energy. And for 52 years, and shame on me, not one time did I say thank you, God, for what you've given me. Not one time. Until I thought I wasn't going to have it. And then I prayed every day thanking God for what I had because I thought I wasn't going to have it. I'd never given thanks for my hands, Brad. Never one time did I give. I never woke up in the morning and said, Hey, God, thank you for the left and the right. Thank you. Thank you that they've been together. Thank you that they work together. Thank you that I can grab Elizabeth's shoulder with them. Thank God. Oh, I'm going to have to pray for dirty minds to be relieved. I, thank God. I, hey, at least y'all are listening. That was good. I called who's still awake. But you know what? I thank God for hands now. I thank God for legs now. I thank God for life a lot better than I do now. So guess what? God took a painful situation in my life and taught me a lesson. 
So I can look at what I've been through or I can always focus on where I'm going. I choose to show you all an example of look at where you're going. Where are you going? Now we got a leper that gets involved with us today that teaches us about gratitude. Jesus was on his way. He was on the main highway. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. That was always the way into Jerusalem. If you will, this road that Jesus has done quite a bit in the New Testament <laughs> happens to be the I-65 of his day. If you live in Bowling Green, Kentucky, as we do, for us to go anywhere, where do we know we're going? We're going to I-65. To catch I-40, we got to get on what? I-65. To catch I-75, we got to get on I-70, I-65 to get to 75. Y'all got it. Or you don't travel much. If you're going to Richardsville, you do not have to get on I-65, okay? 185. So he's on the road, and all of a sudden, he encounters some people that have been exiled. How many of y'all have ever been exiled? Or worse yet, how many of y'all have felt exiled? Oh, me too, man. When I was in the hospital, I mean, my body was messed up. But let me tell you what one of the roughest things was. I could not see people because they would, they would have infected me and I would have died. And Elizabeth had to wear like this purple, blue, excuse me, blue, blue. I was thinking about Klein over here, purple came to my mind. Uh, it's this blue, blue kind of, you know, I can't get infected suit. I mean, it looked like I had Martians working on me all the time. It scared me. In fact, when I first kind of woke up, I thought I'd been abducted. <laughs> and so... I looked at Elizabeth. In fact, the third day, I looked at her and I said, listen, you need to go change your clothes. I ain't getting on you. You've had the same thing on every day. And then Mark Hale came to visit me, and they put one on him. And I saw him coming down the hall. He looked like a little pup tent just coming down the hall. They, they just acted him up in. But I had been exiled so that I would live. Now, it's opposite for this lepers. They've been exiled so that you'll live. So they've been cast out because leprosy was a bad disease. We don't struggle with it in, in, in America. Thank God for immunization. Thank God that we vaccinate. That's why we don't have some of these things. By the way, just heads up. There, there's some things you don't catch because you've been vaccinated that, that are important. And, and so let, let me tell you what happens here. When you get leprosy, you can't feel your hands. You can't feel your feet. Any of y'all ever had that moment? It's like your feet are asleep, your hands are asleep, and you can't feel pain. And when you can't feel pain, you lose your digits because you damage them and infect them, and they fall off. So lepers would have been quite a sight. Feet, you know, toes missing, hand, fingers missing. And you don't think about your digits till you're not going to what? I mean, none of y'all wake up in the morning and go, Lord, I thank you that I got ten digits. How many of y'all have ever done that? How many of y'all have ever stumped your little toe? How many of y'all found out every digit is important? Hey, that little toe, you know, the one that's curled in on the side, it's barely got a finger, a toenail on it? The one you got to stretch back out to get a clipper over? That nasty, gnarly little toe, right? I'm just telling you, Les, the one when you push your flip-flops on, you look down at your foot and you go, why? <laughs> that one. Do you know you can't run if you don't have that? You won't have your balance. The only reason I know that when I went to, to youth camp, we had a guy that lost both of his little toes on a lawnmower. Now, I don't know how you do that, stick one foot in here and stick the other foot in, but anyway, he had lost both toes in the library. And he had, and the thing I remember is, Elizabeth, he couldn't run. So these leopards, they're awkward. But even in spite of where they are, Jesus has mercy on them. Isn't that interesting? As they're walking in the road, here's what happens. The leopards yell out. They recognize it's Jesus. They said, hey, Jesus! Have mercy on us! Because the Bible says, look, they shouted. So funny, I used to go to church. I used to go to a real sophisticated church. I grew up in, like, intellectual church. And the guy would read this passage, and he would go, and the leopard yelled out to Jesus, Jesus. Have mercy on us. I don't know about y'all, but when I need something that's really bad, I ain't never talking like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I'm looking at Elizabeth and it's a really bad situation, I've never gone, Elizabeth, <laughs> this is the problem we have today. I am screaming out to God, God have mercy, mercy on me. 
How many of y'all started praying for your marriage when it was about over? I'm not going to point any of you out, but that's what you did. You waited till it got bad till you turned to Jesus. Now, here's where I want to encourage us. Why don't we stay with Jesus when it's good? How many of y'all thank God you got good health? And need to thank him every day for that. How many of y'all thank God you're still married? Think about what your husband or wife has been through. They got reason to leave, but they've decided to stay. Guess what that's called? Mercy! And we're not a merciful people anymore. We tend to be judgmental. We tend to be anti. We tend to immediately judge one another without listening to one another. But guess what Jesus did? He met these lepers on the road, and then guess what he did? He gave them grace. He said, have mercy on us. Heal us. Give us something. When they saw him, guess what he told them? Go show yourself to the priest. Go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were? How many of y'all believe Jesus can do that? I love it. Jesus is cool, isn't he? He didn't go, now go roll around in holy oil 10 times to the right, 10 times to the left, and give it a little hokey pokey for the healing. He didn't do all that jazz. I want you to see the power of Jesus. He spoke mercy into their lives. He said, now go to the priest and show them who I am. That's what he's really saying, isn't it, Mike Sarkozy? Go to the priest and show them who I am. You know what I'm asking you to do today in the name of Jesus? I want you to stand up in this world and show people who Jesus is by your life. It's time for us to stand up. I don't know if America needs to be made great again, but I'm absolutely sure it needs to be made merciful again. And we're the people of that. Robert, we need to be known as the people of mercy and what? Grace. grace. Look at your neighbor and go, mercy and grace. Mercy. Mm. That ought to be a new cologne perfume. <laughs> we ought to do a commercial for the world that says, Feel the cleansing of mercy and grace. The aroma brought from heaven to earth. Amen? Seriously. He says, go show yourself to the priest. Now, they had faith because guess what they went and did? They showed themselves to the repeat priest. Because guess what? They're smart. They can't get back in unless they have a priest certificate. Jesus said, not only am I going to heal you, I'm going to reestablish you to your life. Isn't that what grace and mercy does? Yep. Not only, isn't it, Scott? Not only am I going to heal you, I'm going to put you back in. Guess what they got to do? Samson, guess what these boys got to go do? Go home. How many, some of y'all in college, how many of y'all first, you know, you went to college, went to college at your first semester, you went away, you were so excited about being away from your first semester. Some of you seniors in high school, you dream of what you're going to be like your first semester. You're dreaming about it. Oh, I can't wait to get to college. Mom and dad won't be there. That means you're doing your own laundry. Well, it used to be that way. I don't know, you may take your mama with you now to do your laundry, I don't know. Uh, uh, we didn't have mothers and fathers on our college campus. We didn't get days off when we felt bad either. I was under D. Rowe Downing. We went to Western Kentucky University when there was ice on the hill. D. Rowe, there's ice. Get you some ice skates. Get to class. It was about learning. So here's these lepers, man. They're not whining. They're crying. They're not whining out. They're crying out. God do something. God does something. They go and they show themselves to the priest. It gets what they're clean and they get to go home. When you're a freshman, when you're a freshman in college, you think it's going to be so good, and then you cannot wait. You cannot wait for what? Thanksgiving. And you get to do what? Go home. How many of y'all glad you get to go home? You get to be a part. You get to participate. Here's the most beautiful thing. When you get ready to die, what do you, what do you get to do? You do. You got it, girl. In fact, we had to say goodbye to one of our members. Well, we had to say, see you later. We don't say goodbye at Hillview because we're going to see each other again. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And so, Montreal Holland were doing his funeral, and David was a great funeral. Pastor Mark, man, I mean, great, great moment. But, but Montreal, when he got ready, they went and visited him in Sunday school class like last week, last Sunday. And Montreal looked at all of them, and he said, well, gentlemen, it's time for me to go home. 
That's what it means to celebrate the goodness of God. So you know what I'm doing every day I live now? Going home. I remember my first semester at Georgetown College. I was away from Elizabeth. My heart was broken. It was so broken I may have had to go out on some other dates because I was, I was, it, was, it was so broken. No, but I really was glad to get home, wasn't I? And, and, and eat my mom and dad's food. And my mom do my laundry and get to see Elizabeth again. And, and, kinda, and, I, and, and for the first time, I was grateful for where I came from. How many of y'all are grateful from, from whence you came, the King James would say, to therefore where you're going? I came from sin and shame, and the grace and mercy of God has destined me to the hope of heaven and the reality of an eternal destiny with God Almighty. That's the people that we are. So you know what? It's time for us to learn how to be grateful. You need to thank God that he saved your soul. You need to quit whining about what you don't have. Time to shut the whining up. Look at your neighbor and go, quit whining. Come on, tell him, quit whining. Quit whining. I'm tired of the whining, amen? amen. Let's kill the whining at Hillview. Say, I'm not going to whine, but I'm going to embrace what I have. Now, I want to tell you something that's powerful. Thank God for who he made you to be. Out of 10 guys, only one came back and thanked God. And Jesus recognized him. When you get thankful, you get connected. That's what I'm teaching you spiritually. We're not thankful enough. Today in worship, how many of y'all were thankful that we sang? I mean, listen, did you hear the songs we sang? I apologize in the name of Jesus. Even as your pastor, there, there were days that I sat here and never heard what the song said. That's That's wrong. You want to see it get real, breathe it in. You want to see it come to life. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Lord Jesus, thank you for repairing my life. Lord Jesus, thank you for putting me back in. Lord Jesus, thank you. Watch this, Heather, he'll never let go of you. What do you think about that, Mama? Tony, what do you think about that? He ain't never going to let go of you guys. New believers who now celebrate in the Lord. How many of y'all give thanks that you saw that today? You know what? We, we better... We better. Well, let me finish this today. Y'all ready to go home? I just asked you a question. You ready to go home? Amen. Both homes. How many of y'all ready? Watch this. See, you got you to learn something. This afternoon, I hope to go to the house. Amen. Now, I say that different than I used to, don't I, honey? Used to, I said, I'm going to the house. But I had a day I didn't get to go to the house. And I realized I'm not in charge like I thought I was. I'm just being honest. I've become grateful in the morning. In fact, how many of y'all remember testimony time if you went to church back in Sunday nights? How many of y'all remember Sunday night church? It was so funny, Sunday night church, you'd have testimony time in Sunday night church. And you probably remember this. They did this in Allen County. Didn't they have testimony time? I remember testimony time, and what testimony time really was is the preacher was wore out and he didn't have anything else to say that day, so he got led on Sunday night to have testimony time. Unless you know I'm telling the truth. And then number two, the song leader, he was out of songs, so he let you pick your own songs for the first 25 minutes. But I remember this at testimony time. You all do. The old men would stand up. Old men. They'd grab that pew. Whatever the preacher's name was. Brother so-and-so, I want to thank God for saving my sinful soul. And I want to thank God that I'm still breathing. Well, I'm sitting back there going, duh. We're at church. It's what God does. Save you. You're alive. Duh. But you know what I found? When you're 80, you thank God for being alive more than you do when you're 18. When you're 80, you get up, you use the bathroom. That's a celebration. <laughs> Come on, I'm done. Have y'all ever been to the nursing home? I go to the nursing home. I taught all them sweet saints. And I lean down and say, Miss Sarah, how you doing? she would say, I used the potty today, preacher. Well, hallelujah. I didn't think that was a big deal. Till I was in the hospital. Elizabeth and my whole family broke down, cried when I finally used the potty. Because it was going to kill me if I didn't. Isn't that crazy? The stuff that'll kill you. The stuff that will kill you is numerous. But the thing that'll bring you to life no matter what is Jesus. Well, I think we need to get back and thank him a little more. What do you think? I just don't think we thank him enough. 
I want to thank you guys, seriously. It ain't about elections. It's about faithfulness. And I don't care who the president is, we're still called to be what? Faithful. And we got to be faithful, and we got to be righteous, and we got to be real, and we got to be merciful, and we got to be loving, and we got to be kind, and we got to befriend all kinds of people no matter what. And no matter what they call us, we're still going to love them. Amen? I've been called every name in the book. You know why it doesn't bother me? Because I know what Jesus said about me. Some of y'all get all unraveled about what they say because you've never listened to what he said. He said, you're marvelous. He said, you're wonderful. He said, you're worth saving. In fact, he went to a cross and he died on it because he loves you more than anything else that will love you. And he will always love you. Always love you. So here's what I want you to do today. Guess what happened? I want you to go ahead and stand on up. Because you know what one guy did? He came back. And he said, Jesus, thank you. And when he saw that he was healed, he turned back praising God. He turned back praising God. And when he saw that he was healed, he became grateful. And guess what Jesus said? Weren't there, weren't there ten? And only one came back and said, oh, Jesus, thank you. How many of us stand at this altar Sunday after Sunday and never come to this altar and just say, Lord, thank you for saving a sinner like me. Now, some of you today, guess what you need to do? For the first time in your life, you need to come forward. And there's many of you here today that need to make this decision. Here's the good news. God loves you and he wants to forgive you. He does not look at your leprosy. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I've been teaching Elizabeth this principle. Uh, I look different now than I used to. Sometimes, sometimes people, are, they're going to look at me and wonder what happened. See, that's what we do to people, isn't it? We look at them. See, the world saw lepers. The world saw missing digits. The world saw exile. But when Jesus saw them, he saw his mercy. He exercised his capability, and he looked into their situation. Amen. Now today I'm going to tell you about a God that looks into you and not at you. And grace and mercy goes into you, not at you. And it changes you forever. So today I'm inviting all of you, especially if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, to say these wonderful words. Lord Jesus, forgive who? Me. Brad, you did that many years ago. Not that you're old, but you're older than you were. Boy, that's rocket scientist, isn't it? Old enough to have quad bypass now, right? Old enough to think a little bit now before you go do it, right? You would agree you didn't do that much, and I didn't do that much when we were younger, right? And the grace of God's never left your life, has it? Never has. Because God don't look at you. He looks in you. So today, if it's 100 people, so be it. You know who I want to be saved today? Anybody that's not. And if you are saved today, I think it's about time we kind of kneel at the altar and say God thank you for saving a sinner like me because if it wasn't for you I'm not going to heaven I love y'all what a church you are but Scott you know what really makes me frustrated what a church we could be let's quit looking at what we are and let's start imagining what we can be David Duncan you see it every day there's people that turn away from a life of leprosy. That's what addiction is. It's leprosy. It numbs us to the reality of life. We cover it up and medicate it in pain. And then we start bumping into things crazy everywhere. Have you noticed that? And then God comes along and says, I have mercy and grace on you. Be saved. If that's you today, be saved. We got a lot of people uh, in recovery here. And then we got the rest of them that just went ahead and been healed. And so I want you to be healed, but the recovery is a great place to start, and healing is a great place to end up. And when Jesus says you're healed, you're healed, and nobody can take that away. Amen? Amen. I'd kind of joke with my doctors. 
they'd go, your, your healing's coming along. And I'd go, give him praise. I said, you all have done some good patchwork, and he's done some great healing. No offense to you doctors. But the best you can do is put it together and hope it works. And after you put it together, I believe the hand of God touches it so it might work again. Amen? We're going to have some people get saved. If you've never been baptized, Heather, thank you for being obedient. What a great-looking husband you got and what two beautiful kids. And thank you for being their mother. Your little girl had the privilege of sitting with me while you was being baptized. and She got loose on her daddy because she got excited. I wish I had a faith like Kennedy. I wish that I was still that child of the Lord that got so excited. I got so excited about baptism that Elizabeth had to come get me off the steps and set her in her lap. He said, honey, calm down. No, I think the church needs to shout it out a little louder. We've been awful quiet the last hundred years. We've watched evil comb our culture, and we've sat in silence, hadn't we, Jennifer? We've sat in silence as we have watched the devil literally take out a whole generation. And we wonder what happened. Today, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. You say, Rev, will that change me? Forever. If you haven't been baptized, you need to get baptized because it's time to step it up and do what Jesus said. Your pastor believes baptism is important. Real important. You know why? If you're going to stand with him, do what he says. And Lord, if he's forgiven me, it's no problem for me to tell everybody I've been buried in Jesus and oh, oh, you better watch out because guess who I'm talking to today? I'm talking to a multitude of people that have been risen in Jesus. And if we would come together, be the people that God has made us, America will be more than great again. It'll be godly again. In a godly nation, all people get blessed. I hope we'd be that, amen. I thank God for making you today. I thank God even more that Jesus came to earth to save us today. Uh, if you're mad at me today, ask why. I mean, because your mind is really twisted. I've told you today you can be healed. I told you you can be forgiven. I told you you can go to heaven. I told you Jesus wants to be in your life. Why would you resist such a good message? There's only one reason. You think your way is better than God's way. And if you're breathing that in, I hope you would exile it and, and exhale it and get rid of it forever. And say, Jesus, I believe you can do a better job with my life than I can. That'll get you to heaven. Amen. All right, let's pray. Lord, bring us to the altar. Jesus, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that's here today. I thank you for that calm peace that's on us today. I thank you, God, that you're going to heal some people today. You are saving people right now. If you feel that Holy Spirit right now, you know God's talking to you right now, listen to me. Lord Jesus, just tell him, Lord Jesus, I need to be changed. I need to be saved. Lord Jesus, come into my life and tell me, church, what do you need to ask for? Save me. Anybody other than Robert know that? What do you need to say? Lord Jesus, forgive me. And guess what Jesus will do? Jack, you've seen it a zillion times with me. You've seen it since I was a buck kid at Smith Grove Baptist Church. You've seen people kneel down at the altar and say, Lord, Jesus come into my life, and they get an extraordinary life. Are you going to be perfect after you receive Jesus? No, but you sure going to get a lot better. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all just need to get a little better every week? There we go. Let's work on it together. Amen? He'll view, I love y'all. I want to tell you, I'll do a better job today than I did six months ago. I thank God for you every day. I thank God that our church is not one color. I thank God that our church is not one thought. I thank God that our church is one people because God, we are the people of God. And we come in all flavors, colors, attitudes. And when you put that all together and it comes together, wow. What we could do in the WBKO viewing area if we just stood up to be the people of God. 
And then when CNN comes around here snooping old Anderson Cooper, I like old Anderson. Old Anderson comes to Bowling Green and he said, what's the matter with y'all? How come your economy is good? Jesus. How come your food tastes good? Jesus. How come your marriages stay together? Well, y'all get it now. How come the college keeps winning football games? Jesus and excellent recruiting. Uh, see what I'm saying? Y'all got it now. Hey, this altar's for everybody. I just want to tell you, if you're here today and you think you can't come to the altar because you're a member of another church, I, I, I don't want to be offensive to you, but I don't believe in all that. I believe there's one church because I've read the Bible, and it says there's one church, one Lord, one baptism, one faith of all. There's one. There's not many. There's one. There's one. There's one. So I say this. One great God, many locations. Many expressions, but one what? Great God. Well, y'all come. Some of y'all need to be baptized because you had not done that yet. Some of you all have prayed that prayer and asked Jesus in your life. No pastor can save you, but we just want to celebrate with you. Amen. Only Jesus can save you, but we want to hear about it so we can celebrate with you because we want to welcome you in to the kingdom of God. Amen. And uh, I'm going to tell you all this. Just a few weeks ago, I got a grandson, man. It was amazing. Dude's already better looking than my son. I mean, four weeks old. And I can tell right now he's going to tackle better than, than anybody I've ever seen. I mean, I can, see, I can see in his eyes right now. I talked to him and said, Tucker. And when the University of Alabama plays, I see him getting a personal connection to that already. I've already called Nick Saban. Got a linebacker on the way. Now, I don't know if he's going to do it. He's probably going to play the piano. But, but here's, here's the thing. If he does, he'll do it like a linebacker. I'm telling you, it'd be great. You know, you love people, but you know, as soon as that kid was born, I don't know what he's going to be. I don't know what he's going to do. You, you might have been through this. You've had kids, hadn't you? Weren't they scary in the beginning? You know what I prayed, Dad? I prayed this about my kids. Boy, may they not be like me, but may they become who God made them to be. I've been very fortunate. That's just heads up, parents. I've been able to look at two adults who have grab Jesus Christ and it's really not because they were raised by Stephen and Elizabeth it was that they attended Hillview Heights Church all their life and they met a lot of you and you spoke the words of Jesus in them and they're living it out now in different areas of the world that's what's going on here if you need Jesus you come on because when you say Lord have mercy on me you'll say go show yourself to the priest you're not what you used to be. That's what I thank God for. Is nobody here has to go to hell. And nobody has to keep being what they used to be. Because the power of God will make you a new. I'm done. But the Holy Spirit's not done. So you come to the altar and you pray. And you get these pastors to pray over you. We believe in healing. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We believe that God will do immeasurably more in your life than you can imagine. So we say receive Him, love Him, and be in Him. This altar is open. You come and be saved in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, come on today. Don't, don't hold it back anymore.